Good morning. How to set up React application with TypeScript and use the most common features of React using TypeScript. I will show how to handle events, how to specify props, how to specify default props, and how to use state in React functional components. First, let's generate a new React application. To do this, we run npx create React app. We specify the template TypeScript. And we will create an application React TypeScript example. Now we have our application structure generated. Let's move to the folder React TypeScript example and open the project. Create React Tab generated a bunch of files for us. First of all, it generated the tsconfig JSON that contains settings for the TypeScript compiler. The default settings are fine, we don't need to change them, so we can look at other files. Then we have public folder that has exactly the same contents as a public folder in regular Create React App application. It has um, the files that shouldn't be included into the bundle and should be served separately, like favicon, index.html, logos, manifest, and robots.txt. Then we have the src folder. All the files in this folder will be included into the bundle using webpack. Here we have tsx files like app.tsx and index.tsx. These are the files that contain JSX layout. And if in JavaScript React application you can name those files JS or JSX, it doesn't matter. In TypeScript it is important that your files that contain JSX code have the .tsx extension. This is because of angle brackets. Both TypeScript and JSX have the syntax that uses angular brackets. For JSX it's the tags, the elements that use it. And for TypeScript there is type assertion operator that allows you to treat one type as another. Next you have regular TS files that don't contain JSX, service worker setup and setup tests. And also we have a DTS file. DTS files contain only TypeScript types definitions. In this case, React app and DTS refers to another DTS file inside React scripts module. And if you click on it, you will see that it defines types for assets modules. So that when you import something with JPEG or PNG or GIF or BMP extensions, you will tell TypeScript that the return value is string. Let's get back to our src folder, open the app.tsx and write some component. Let's remove the previous layout and define a component that will have a div and inside of it it will have an input name search type text. Now let's say we want to listen to on change event on this input on change equals on search input. Let's define this callback const on search input. Inside of this callback, we want to get the event target value, the value of this input. We need to define an argument event. And if you don't provide a type for it explicitly, TypeScript will say that event has the any type implicitly. Because in this case, TypeScript cannot infer automatically what type should the event have. And we know that it is an input change event. So we can specify the type react change event and this change event is configurable so we can pass the type of the element on which we want to listen to the change event in our case it is html input element now we can get the event target value const search value equals event target and here typescript already knows that it will be an html input element value and it is known to be a string for HTML input elements. We can use React use state hook to store this search value. Const search value set search value equals React use state. Here we can remove our constant and instead call set search value. When you use use state with uh, TypeScript, you need to specify the type of the value you're gonna store there. You can do it either providing the default value of the type you're gonna use, so in our case it's a string, and then TypeScript will infer that if the default value was a string, then probably we're gonna store the strings in this use state. Or 
you can specify the type of the values using this triangular bracket syntax. Let's remove the logo and the failing test. Now let's make this input controlled. Let's specify the value to be search value and add another element, a button with text search. Let's imagine that this is a search bar. We have an input where you can input the search query and there is a search button that you can click to perform the search. We add a non-click handler, click equals search and let's create a function const search. In this search function we want to get this search value and send it to the backend to perform the actual search. In this example we won't have the real backend. So let's imagine that our app component will accept a prop called um, send search query. How do we specify the prop, the search, the send search query prop for the app component? When you use React with TypeScript, you can specify the props using types or interfaces. I will show you both options. So first of all, let's define an interface for the props. Interface app props. Interfaces define the form of the objects. In our case, app props is an object that has send search query function. Send search query is a function that doesn't return anything. So we specify the void return type for this function. Now we need to specify that the app component has the app props props types. There are several ways to do it. First of all, we can just specify that the props argument that application component accepts has the type of app props and it will work. The more React way to do it would be to specify the functional component type to our app component. Let's remake it to be an arrow function const app equals an arrow function and now we can specify the type of our app component. So it should be react functional component and we can provide the types of the props app props. And as you can see TypeScript automatically inferred that send search query is a function that accepts no arguments and returns void from the props that we defined here. If functional component sounds too long for you, then you can use fc shorthand. And you can also just import the fc type from React and omit the React dot in the beginning, if you want even shorter syntax. Now in our search callback, we can call send search query that will supposedly send the data to the backend. Now what if we want the send search query to become an optional argument and provide some default value for it. Here is how you do it. You can say send search query by default equals a function that returns undefined. And you can also make the send search query an optional argument by adding a question mark before the brackets. Now in your index.tsx file, if you want to, you can pass the send search query function and if you try to pass the function that will accept some arguments, arg string, in TypeScript you specify the types through the colon and then return arg, then TypeScript will tell that the function types, send search query and the one that you pass to it, they don't really match. That you pass the function that accepts a string argument and returns a string and it's not assignable to the type of a function that does not accept arguments and returns void which means doesn't return anything. So this is the convenience of using TypeScript with React that you know about the errors in your code before you even launch it. Getting back to the types or interfaces to define the props. So this time we define the app props to be an interface. Uh, but you could also use a type to do it. Here is how. You change the interface to type and now the th syntax is a bit different so you need to assign a value to this type but otherwise everything else is the same. Types and interfaces most of the time can be used interchangeably and I recommend you to read the documentation for the minuscule differences that exist there but the main difference and the main reason why you might want to prefer types over interfaces to define your props is that when you hover over the 
props defined as a type, TypeScript will show you the form of this object. So here we see that app props is a type that contains a field send search query, which is a function that doesn't return anything. If we change it back to be an interface and hover over it, it will just tell that the interface is called app props way less information. Thank you for watching this video. Press the like button if it was helpful. And if you have more questions about React and TypeScript, uh, let me know in the comments or join my Discord server and ask them there. I also have a mailing list which you can subscribe to using the link in the description.